So now going back to the expression that we found for the drain source current of a MOSFET, we saw that before pinch off, so without any pinch off and we're well, operating, let's say, quote unquote, normally, um, before pinch off, we have uh, an expression for the drain current or drain source current that looks like this. So we have this parabolic kind of expression and uh, we actually plotted that. So the plot of that expression looked like something like this, right? And we saw that if we actually increase this, it's going to go down parabolically, right? And we saw that it actually peaks when VDS is equal to VGS minus VTH. So this was two slides ago. Now, let me actually erase this part. We call this region the triode region, and sometimes you might actually see in some textbook they call it the linear region. Why? Because, well, more or less, when I'm actually changing VDS, ID is changing at least, ID is changing linearly or like pseudo linearly, right? So that's why um, I'm hesitant to call it linear region. I always call it triad region, right? But then we also saw that we have this deep triad region, meaning that when VDS is a lot smaller than 2 VGS minus VTH, so I'm talking about this part of the curve, that, well, the relationship is actually uh, pretty linear, right? You can see that it's almost a line, right? When it gets to very small VDS, ID and VDS have a very uh, linear relationship with each other. So I'm going to call this deep, oops, deep triode region. Okay, but then the entire thing here is called linear region or, well, let's call it triad region. And the current of the transistor or the drain source current of the transistor expression looks like this. Okay, now let's talk about what happens when we have a pinch off. So as I increase VDS or like, well, let's say the source is ground, so I'm only increasing drain, drain voltage, and I go beyond VGS minus VTH, I saw that I have a channel pinch off. And because of that channel pinch off, I saw that the density of free electrons um, basically is not re really, not only it's not equally distributed along my channels, it actually becomes zero after a certain length called L1, right? And then, well, this L1 and the placement of this L1 depends on the value of VD. The larger VD, the more, L, the, more the L1 is going to move toward the left and toward the source, okay? So what kind of a difference this is going to make in my current expression? Well, if you remember, this was the Q v v being the velocity right and that's link q was the charge density and i integrated that over the length of the channel to get the current right so now knowing that i'm not going to have any free electrons after l1 instead of integrating from 0 to l i'm going to integrate from 0 just to l1 right so my integration is from 0 to l1 of the same expression uh, my voltages are going to be changing from zero, and then I know that at this point where pinch off happens, it's exactly the point that uh, basically my Vx is actually equal to Vgs minus Vth, right? Because if Vx is equal to Vgs minus Vth, then the difference between here and here is just going to be the threshold voltage. Therefore, like that's the point that I have to pinch off, right? That's the point that the difference is just going to be exactly equal to terrestrial voltage. Anything after that is going to be just, uh, well, uh, any any point to the right of that point is going to be basically having no free electrons. Okay. Now, knowing this, I'm going to do the integration based on these new limits. And interestingly, because well, my limit is actually equal to VGS minus VTH, I'm going to end up with a equation that looks like this. Now what is interesting about this equation is that it doesn't have VDS in it anymore. This means that if I actually increase the VDS from this point forward beyond VGS minus VTH, the current is not going to change as long as the gate source voltage is constant. 
So the current is not going to change with the VDS. So that's why we call this region the saturation region, meaning that the, the increase in the current is saturated with respect to changes in the drain voltage or drain source voltage. Okay. Um, I would like to say that this is actually a really, really good news for us. Why? Because we got uh, an expression that looks like that that tells us that our transistor is kind of working like a work, working like a voltage controlled current source, and this is exactly what I wanted. So up to now, I've been talking about this like sandwich of three layers working like a capacitor, and then later on we saw that in the triode region, my transistor worked like initially like a perfect resistor, later on like a basically a pseudo resistor, but then it was kind of like a resistor. But if you remember, for an amplifier, for a transistor to be used as an amplifier, we didn't want a, tra a transistor that looks like a resistor or a capacitor. We wanted a voltage controlled current source. That's what actually helped us to actually make amplifiers right and now this is a, this this expression is telling me that the moment that pinch off happens and that's why i said pinch off is so interesting and something really interesting comes out of it the moment that pinch off happens once we actually go to this saturation region my current is not a function of drain source voltage anymore it's only a function of gate source voltage so basically by controlling the gate so if this is my mosfet let me actually draw a mosfet here if i connect the gate to some battery voltage some fixed voltage let's say 0.6 right the source is ground i can actually draw a box around this and say that this id that i have here is constant as, because internally there's nothing is changing so I pretty much this is equivalent to some current source equal to IT. This should remind you of something that we have seen before. We have seen this in PJTs that um, well the vo whatever was happening at the collector side of the PJT was not really changing the current of my transistor. My current the current of my transistor was only a function of the base emitter voltage it was an exponential function but it was a if and i'm saying that basically i'm assuming that there's no early effect or anything but then for for a normal operation without early effect we saw that the collector voltage the collector emitter voltage had nothing to do with the current of my transistor the current of my transistor for pjt was ic equal to is e to the power of or exponential of VBE over VT. We have a very similar kind of a situation here where the current that I have, the drain current, is really, well, some constant times a function of gate source voltage. So gate source is kind of like that base emitter. So if I want to put a BJT and MOSFET side by side, you will see that I have base collector emitter, and for MOSFET I have drain gate source so you can see that over there the B, the base emitter voltage was setting the current at the collector here the gate source voltage is setting the current at the drain right of course like over there in the linear region of operation uh this uh this transistor was like a ba basically a voltage controlled current source for a mosfet in the saturation region of operation we have this but Nonetheless, we have it, right? So basically, once the pinch off happens, we have a voltage controlled, voltage controlled current source, a VCCS uh, kind of a component uh, that well, my transistor is actually transformed into.